So starting with September bonds, back in the summer of 1993, we were in a nice uptrend. Now we're looking for uh, specific chart patterns that will give us ideal trade location and low risk uh, in the market. Here's a pattern that I saw. It looked like a nice ascending triangle. You had two little double tops there marking a, a wall of resistance. The uptrend line extending off this chart was well established and marked the lower boundary of these corrections. So if you just draw a horizontal line all the way to that uptrend line and intersect that apex of that ascending triangle and split the difference between the upper end of that ascending triangle and the bottom of that triangle, that will give you an initial place to put your protective stop. All you're looking for now is a breakout above resistance, which we got. We went long on this gap up on the open at 111.30. Our risk with a stop at 111.09 was $656.25 on a full contract a full contract uh, on the Board of Trade bonds. The market came back to retest the breakout area, missed our stop, consolidated for a week, went to a new high. You had a little reaction low right there, move your stop up there. You start trailing your stop up now. And here's another little reaction low right there. You keep moving your stop up now and locking in profits. You've, got, you've, you've turned this trade into a winning trade. Let's not lose it. Here's another reaction low. And all of a sudden, that market gaps up. When the market gaps up, I move my stop from that last reaction low to the bottom of that gap. I'm ratcheting up my stop in the market at the same time. One, two, three, four, five. Six days later, we get stopped out. So I made some pretty good money. I sit back. The uptrend line has not been broken. So now I'm looking for either a breakout above this reaction high or, or for some type of chart pattern to develop. And lo and behold, a symmetrical triangle begins to develop. A high here, a high here. The bottom of, the, the bottom of this trend line uh, marks the bottom of that symmetrical triangle. A breakout above this uh, resistance of the triangle will let me go long again. I intersect the apex of that symmetrical triangle with a horizontal line. I went long at 116.21. My stop is 116.05, a risk of $500. Okay, what did I say earlier? Excuse me. After you're in a profitable position by the fourth day, you move your stop to break even. Here's a little reaction low. It's hard to see because of the circle, but there's a reaction low there. So I went from 116.21 to the bottom of this reaction low to move my stop up. And I trail that stop. Once this market gapped down, I exited my position. When a market gaps down like that in a trending market, if you're in an uptrend, markets should not gap down. If they do, there's a sign of trouble there. It does not mean that, that a top is in all the time, but it just tells me when you're in a trend, either up or down, for example, in this one, you're in an uptrend, and the market gap down after going to a new high, that's a sign of trouble. All of a sudden, you've got more sellers and buyers in the market. And in this case, the Fed had made some changes in the interest rates. They were going to raise interest rates in the bond market gap lower. We exited our, our position, and we went short at 117.07. Our risk was the top of that gap at 117.27, a risk of $625. Then we broke out below this long-term uptrend line, confirming a major top had been posted. And we remained short all the way down to this day 
when the market gapped back up, we exited at 114.05. A couple days later, the market gapped back down. We went short at 113.04 and exited again at 112.25. We went short on the gap lower opening. Our stop was initially at the top of that gap. The following day, we gapped down one more time, so we lowered our stop to the previous day's low. Three or four days later, we got stopped out because the market rallied. That little gap right there did indeed mark an exhaustion gap. I said earlier that if, when a market has been in a downtrend for a period of time and gaps lower, and that gap is filled within a week to 10 days, odds are very high you've marked some kind of an exhaustion gap. And that was indeed the case. The market got very choppy in here and tried to establish a trading range. Uh, we thought about going long up here when we had a breakout, but we had no follow through the next day. The second, day, uh, second jab, we had a breakout. Second day, we closed above this winter's trading range. And the third day, we were really thinking we were going to get long this market. And the uh, market fell apart and couldn't hold anything together and came back down. You only had one day, one day's close above this trading range the first time and two days close above it the second time within two weeks. The market came down hard in about the middle of that trading range it stopped and formed a little bear flag. The day the market broke out, bonds posted a key reversal down. We were stopped short at 112.17 or, or 112.12 our stop was, was right at the eight, uh, intersection where the bottom of that uh, flag formation intersected a horizontal line. So we had five ticks or five points risk in the market, $156.25. Very small risk in the market. And from there on, we just used little reaction highs. to lower our, protect, uh, lower our protective stop in this market. We got stopped out this day because we took out our reaction high right here where our stop was. The market came back up and retested this downtrend line, went to a new low, failed to sustain the breakout to a new low, and is now broken out above this downtrend line and formed a trading range. There's no reason really to be in the market right now. You've locked in some very good profits from 112.12 to 105.09, and you're waiting for your next trading opportunity.